for the next series of mini lectures, you'll be learning about DNA and you'll be knowing things about its structure and how it's inherited. So what I hope that you will learn from these series of um, mini lectures is I want you to know about what DNA is. Why is it important? Where is it found? And what makes it up and also how it gets copied. So first of all, what is DNA? If you look at different sources, whether you look in books or online, some people will call DNA the chemical of life. It's also called the molecule of inheritance. And it can also be termed the molecule of life. So there are different things that are, are different terminologies that are used to um, describe DNA. But the important thing is that we know that DNA is essential to life. DNA is what makes us who we are, basically. Whether you are they, you're an, a human being to the lowest organism, we all rely on this essential molecule. Now, it's important to know that DNA is found in almost all organisms. However, it's not found in some organisms. Some, some organisms actually use RNA as their genetic material. So just bear that in mind. For our purposes, we're going to be focusing on DNA for this um, mini lecture. So DNA, as I said, it contains information. And the information it contains is in the form of genes. And genes basically are responsible for making us who we are. Genes, the definition I put here is that genes are actually functional units of DNA. So they carry information for making proteins, and they also are responsible for making RNA molecules. So if this is an example of a, a, series, a stretch of DNA. So if you notice, in the previous picture, DNA is represented as a, what we call a double helix. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Now, just bear in mind that this is also a double helix. It's just that I drew it like this for simplicity purposes. So let us say this represents a long DNA molecule. Our genes would be small units along this DNA molecule. So this would represent a gene. This one would represent a gene. This one would represent a gene. So this is our DNA molecule. This is our gene, gene 1, gene 2, and gene 3. And this gene is going to have the information that makes this molecule, which is a protein. So this is actually going to make this protein molecule. So that's one of the reasons why DNA is important. One of the main, major reasons the, the, the DNA actually makes protein. DNA can also make functional RNA molecules. And I'm just going to draw this picture to, to depict an RNA molecule. And this molecule can form what are called functional RNA molecules. So this is actually a functional RNA molecule. And these are molecules that work by themselves. They're not converted, or they are not used to make proteins. So we're going to talk about this later when we talk about gene expression. So tRNA and um, transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA are actually called trans, um, functional RNA molecules. So we said that genes are important because they make proteins. So one of the major things that proteins do Proteins are responsible for giving structure. So for example, this lady's here. She actually has a protein called keratin.
And this is one of the proteins that are integrally important in making here, the, the texture that it is or the way it looks. Also, genes are important for making proteins like mole um, molecules like proteins. Sorry. So this is an, a protein called an enzyme. And enzymes are important in our body because they are responsible for speeding up a lot of chemical reactions that occur that allow us to exist as, as human beings. For example, a major one, we need enzymes in order to convert energy into a usable form, which is ATP. So this enzyme is making ATP or converting energy to ATP, which will allow this man to basically move. So that is why we need DNA because of these important functions that our body needs to undergo and in order to make us structurally how we are. DNA is very important, extremely important in inheritance. So in order for information to be passed from parent to offspring, we need DNA to be duplicated. So it is important here where we get our genetic material from both parents. So this is dad, you get half of your genetic information from dad, half of our genetic information from mom, and this makes us who we are. So in order for us as a species to continue, we have to have a way to have this molecule passed down from one generation to the next. So DNA without DNA, basically, we would cease to exist. And this baby here actually gets half his DNA from his mom, half from dad. So just remember that. Where is DNA located? So the location of DNA depends on whether you're dealing with a eukaryotic cell or a prokaryotic cell. So in eukaryotes, there's an important organelle called the nucleus. Sorry about that. So the nucleus is actually um, where our genetic material, DNA, is found. Whereas in prokaryote, these organisms do not contain DNA. So therefore, the DNA is found in the cytoplasm. It's not found in an organelle. It's found in the cytoplasm in prokaryotes. Now, if we were to look at a human being as an organism, and this stick man represents that, his, so this is a human. His body is made up of trillions of cells. So if we were to zero in on just one of his cells, this is a very crude representation of how a cell would look. So I'm just highlighting the nucleus here. Of course, you have other organelles that are found in a cell. So this would be the nucleus of the um, eukaryotic organism. We humans are eukaryotes. And if we were to actually zoom in on the nucleus, this blue area here that we see is actually representing our genetic material. If we were to look at it close up, our nucleus consists of 46 chromosomes. So in humans, we have 46 chromosomes. And these are actually 23 pairs of chromosomes, making 46 chromosomes. And this makes up our genetic material, which is our genome. So the genome is basically our 46 chromosomes. Now, if we were to take one of these chromosomes and zoom in on that, each chromosome actually is a DNA molecule. So this goes to our double helical structure, which is DNA. So DNA is the component of our chromosomes, which are found in the nuclei of our cells. Now, we think about DNA. If DNA was allowed to stretch in, in a typical chromosome in um, a eukaryotic organism, if this DNA from that um, chromosome was just allowed to be stretched out to make one long fiber, it would be about two meters long. So from So from start to finish, if you were to take into consideration, the curves would make about two meters long. But 
this DNA molecule has to fit into the nucleus of a cell, which is 0 0.006 millimeters in diameter. So how does DNA this long fit into a, ce a cell with a diameter this small? In order for that to happen, the DNA material has to be condensed and compact and packaged in order for it to be fit in, into this nucleus. And that's what actually happens. So in eukaryotes, our DNA is, um, consists of um, DNA plus chromatin material, plus proteins. So chromatin, as you know, is actually DNA plus protein. And that's how our genetic material exists in our nucleus. So it's chromatin is equal to DNA plus protein. And the protein that is predominantly found in the, in the chromatin is actually called histones. So DNA gets wrapped around histones in order to start the compaction or the condensation process. And as the process of packaging continues, so you have here where you have less packaging, Sorry, packaging. So here being the most packaged, DNA in its most packaged form. So from less packaging to most packaging, you have to have a series of coiling, coiling, repeated coiling, until you get to this point where the chromosome is in its most condensed form. So this represents a chromosome in metaphase of the cell cycle, in metaphase of um, after, after you have DNA replication occurring. So this is one molecule that got condensed, and then it would form this, this one chromosome. But after you have duplication in the form of DNA replication, and then you have further condensation, you have the chromosome in its most packaged form during metaphase. So this is how our, our, our DNA actually looks in the eukaryotic cell. It's actually found in the eukaryotic cells as chromosomes. <laughs>